Sometimes you want a comic with a layered narrative. Other times you want a heartwarming tale. Maybe you feel like a gritty noir. Or maybe you want an autobiography about a woman living in Iran during the rise of the Ayatollah. And sometimes you just want to read about someone beating up broccoli men with a shovel. Fortunately, there's a comic for that, and it's called Next Wave, Agents of Hate. Next Wave! Next Wave! On the surface, Next Wave is about a small group of obscure heroes fighting ridiculous threats. The characters read less like superheroes and more like walking punchlines. There's former Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau, who plays the straight man role while incessantly reminding us that she was an Avenger. There's the Captain, who's as powerful as he is belligerent. There's Aaron Stack, aka Machine Man, a robot designed to crave beer and hate fleshy ones. There's Elisa Bloodstone, a monster hunter loaded to the teeth with weapons and a perchance for violence. And finally, there's Tabitha Smith, aka Boom Boom, aka Boomer, aka Meltdown, aka Firecracker, aka... well, you get the point. Whose running gag is saying tick 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 boom before blowing something up. Together, they fight the Beyond Corporation, funded by the Terror Cell Silent. That's an acronym, by the way, that's never actually explained in the comic. But below the surface? Actually, that's it. If someone asked me what the comic is like, I'd tell them that it's devoid of character development, has the barest of backstories, and has some of the most outlandish fights in comics. I'd also tell them it's one of the funniest comics of all time. I mean, where else will you see a green dragon that threatens to stuff you down as purple shorts? Or killer koala bears? Or homicidal crabs? Or an assault pterodactyl suit? Or evil broccoli people? Or wolverine apes fighting alongside snakes piloting planes? Or a flying fortress built out of three submarines? But see, the outlandishness is actually completely intentional. Warren Ellis took the idea of the Authority and stripped it of all the plots, logic, character, and sanity. He cut everything back until he was left with pure superhero comics. He wanted to cook this down to the essence of an action book, where things can be ridiculous and it doesn't take away from the experience of it and the fun. And given that Next Wave is often cited as one of the best superhero comics ever, I think Ellis and company nailed it. Ellis keeps Next Wave as compact and simple as possible to make room for the jokes, and to let Stuart Eminem go. That's evident when several pages have barely any dialogue to make room for punching and blowing things up. In every issue, character growth and plot development intentionally take a backseat to the action. There's even a joke in issue 8 where the narration says, One of them even had something approaching a character moment. You can be damn sure we won't let bleep like that happen again. In the penultimate issue, half of the comic is just double-page spreads free of dialogue. If someone read too much into the comic, like, say, someone who desperately needs to find purpose for his Bachelor of Arts in English Literature, they could say that Next Wave's core theme is shutting up and fighting. For example, the terrorist group funding the Beyond Corporation? They're called Silent. What do the villains do? They monologue endlessly. One of the comic's main antagonists, Dark Anger, goes on page-long rants. Number None has several monologues, and the final villain, who I'll keep hidden because it's a great surprise, spends the time monologuing. Meanwhile, while the Next Wave team do speak, it's mostly limited to character quipping and exposition. Mind you, exposition is something of a common trait in Warren Ellis' work. Really, the only time that we see any real deep character monologuing is when the team is forced into their own personal hells. In other words, talking too much is evil. What makes a real hero in Next Wave is punching and blowing stuff up. If there's one word that defines Next Wave, it's irreverence. It takes the most obscure bits of Marvel history and kicks them right in the junk. Still with some semblance of respect for the original material, mind you. It's more of a swift but loving kick in the junk. Even on my third read of the series, I found myself grinning and laughing at the ridiculousness of everything. James Whitbrook of io9 put it best. He said that Next Wave is the annoying kid sibling that you, with your jaded outlook, end up admiring despite the annoyance, because they revel in the fun of it all. In other words, Next Wave not only doesn't try to be anything beyond what it's presenting, but does it with full self-awareness. 
A perfect example of this is the cover for issue 11. At the time of publication, Marvel was doing one of their massive company-wide crossover events, in this case, Civil War. During the event, every main universe comic, whether it tied in with the event or not, was given a template cover design, with the title taking up half the cover space. Proving Next Way's irreverence, the creative team depicted their characters like they were on strike, stating that they don't care and that the Civil War writer Mark Millar licks goats. The book is gleefully violent, and the characters are rarely, if ever, seen rescuing citizens. Instead, similar to the Authority, they charge in, guns blazing, and cause as much collateral damage as possible, so long as the threat is immobilized. With so many wordless panels and pages, you need an artist like Stuart Immonen to go nuts. And go nuts he does, with ridiculous action scenes that still amazingly flow smoothly from one insanity to the next. Wade Von Grobadger's thick ink outlines around the characters give them little before seen depth, and Dave McCaig's coloring gives the book a bold, clunky color palette. Together, the art team turns in some of their best work in the business. Next Wave is one of those perfect, timeless comics that everyone should read if they want a good laugh. After all, any comic that reminds us that Mark Millar licks balls has to be great, right? Hi everyone, thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment below, either with what you thought of this video, or what you'd like to see me cover next, and please remember to like and subscribe. With four videos down, I now have a particular cycle in mind. Each video will follow a theme, a graphic novel, followed by a non-DC or Marvel series, then a DC series, and finally a Marvel series. In this cycle, my next video will cover a graphic novel which you voted to be Andre the Giant by Box Brown. For next time, we'll cover a non-DC or Marvel book, I'll ask you to choose one of the following. Astro City, Black Sad, or Why the Last Man. There's a link in the description to the Twitter poll. Finally, I started a Patreon page. It'll be a per video payment, since I don't think I can do one video a month just yet. But backers have early access to scripts and full videos a day before every video release. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time.